It kind of looks like mortar. That's Leonardo DiCaprio's verdict on the aerial view over Suncor's oil sands mining operation in Alberta. The Oscar-winning actor and environmentalist has spent three years asking a wide variety of people around the world about climate change. His collection of interviews in the documentary, Film Before the Flood, ranging from Barack Obama and the Pope through to Elon Musk and Piers Sellers, cover the science, impacts, vested interests, politics and possible solutions. Before the Flood presented by National Geographic Channel looks at what man-made emissions are doing to our planet now and gives a warning of things to come unless we take action. In terms of box office draw alone, Before the Flood is the most significant film about climate change since Al Gore's An Inconvenient Truth was released a decade ago. DiCaprio has made maximum use of his global star power to bring together some of the world's leading voices and experts on climate change and package them up into 90-minute narrative which drips with urgency, insights and emotion. However, DiCaprio is frank about how his fame has afforded him such a privileged perspective. First time I heard of global warming was when I sat down one-to-one -one with Al Gore. This is most important issue of our time, I had no idea what he was talking about, he said. Science-wise the film doesn't go into great detail, carbon dioxide and methane emissions get a few mentions, but that's about it. The emphasis is very much on the impacts, and the story is peppered with shocking statistics. We hear that Arctic sea ice could be completely gone by 2040, that 50% of the world's coral has been lost in the last 30 years, and that the costs of climate change will have amounted to an estimated $44 trillion by 2060. The documentary is beautifully produced, and the visual texture and cinematography is unsurprisingly impressive. There is a delicate balance between natural, human and political symbols, a mixture of individuals, one-to-ones and groups, and a huge range of shapes, sizes, genders, and colors from across the globe, it felt truly global. One minute the visual context is a scorched rain forest, then a newsflash, then a memory, then an interview, then the planet from space, then a coal mine, then a solar farm, the imagery renders visually, what is much harder to grasp conceptually, that climate change contains a myriad of issues that are very different in nature and yet completely interdependent, in perspectivist terms, there are systems, souls and society. As you might expect, the large corporations that exploit and utilize fossil fuels come under heavy fire, and ineffective politicians and influential skeptics get their portion of the blame. But it is also emphasized that we as individuals have our part to play both in taking a hard look at our lifestyles and in holding our leaders to account. Politicians, after all, tend to respond to what the people want. We the EcoSnooky panel can't say that we learned a great deal scientifically from the film, but as a provocative and at times saddening look at the nature of things to come, it has certainly given us food for thought and a good motivation for nature enthusiasts like us.